I'm Dana. Dana. Yeah. You can't I'm Lydia. Lydia. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Just uh the shirts, I guess. Uh <laughs> she's always Dana's always got a tie-dye on. I always have tie-dye. Lydia's got her hair in a bun. I'm like the Steve Jobs of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> But well, we could we want to hire you. I'm um, the, <laughs> the smart one. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh that's an operation. She's smart. <laughs> I I I gotta tell y'all, I know about mama and and the F word, right? And I put on my shirt. I was like, Mama's not gonna see this shirt. Mm -hmm. She it, won't it's see our, it. It's our uh, F all the way off shirt. I love it. The podcast. I was like, Mama's not gonna see this. Wait, we're fine. Wait, are we not allowed to curse? No, we're fine. Oh, we're okay. fine. So, oh, okay. That's on. That's on our end. If it's on our show, then Mama calls us if she hears us cursing. Oh no, <laughs> she's gonna hate this episode. <laughs> she's gonna be like, "Those potty mouths tell us we're from Jersey. It's not our I'll fault." Say, Mama, they were Jersey girls. She'll say, "Don't say another word." That's right. <laughs> that's the noise that y'all make. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I have I have a real big one. Also, Nydia is super gassy all the time, so we have to have burp breaks. Oh, that's right. Y'all break for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that I can we edit break that. for burps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't. Do that. I would never do that. No. Stop so, in there. It's not going to come out. Oh, like that's a baby. Do a handstand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, are we definitely recording this? <laughs> now, this is what needs to go on Patreon. <laughs> oh, it would actually that would go on full public everything if she does a handstand. I posted a picture last week of her smelling her armpit to see if her deodorant. All right, I definitely have to get this out. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, we recorded. We recorded this. I right, now she's doing a handstand. It hurts. It hurts. I don't know how to do a handstand. I'm starving, bro. I, I mean, for real. Like... <laughs> oh, oh, my my God. God. This bitch is no, over here doing a handstand. Are you I kidding love me? all this behind the scenes stuff. This is awesome. Oh, my God. She's yeah, doing I mean, a handstand. Is she really? I'm going to do this again. Yeah. yeah, she's fully doing a handstand. I love it. I'm... Here, go ahead. I you keep recording her because I'm going to turn this around so that they can so see. Fun. Of course, she she would take it down. Just... Sure, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. I'm in class. Get your butt up in the air. She's a skinny, skinny one of the group. That's why. All right, we good? Yep, we're good. Are you good? You're the burper one. <laughs> Did you burp? I give that a ten. Tens <laughs> <laughs> all around, bitch. All, all, okay. all right, let's well, official. You ready? Oh wait, it's all. It loosened? Yeah, it loosened. All right. Oh my God. Well, now there you go. It works. Yeah. 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 As you can see, Dana also does a beautiful drawings of um, Nydia smells. Oh my God. That's it's so, so there. funny. The armpit smelling. It there. really worked. Thank you. You're so welcome. Any other medical advice I can give you? <laughs> Usually, dole out medical advice and then tell everybody don't listen to that anything you say. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Good. Now you're sweating. No, I want to be more comfortable. You want to be more comfortable. All right. Does anybody ready? need to smell her armpits to see if she's Not me. Well, I stopped using the natural deodorant. <laughs> it doesn't work. I stopped. The natural deodorant stuff doesn't work. I'm sorry, it, it just doesn't. I know. Well, it was Lumi. It was Lumi, and I was hearing so so many good things about it, but it didn't smell good. So here's the thing. I started using Lumi and because it doesn't have an antiperspirant in it, it just has deodorant. I got, mm -hmm. I got a little bit of a fungus under my armpit. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no, no more. You yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I, I got I, this I'm, weird rash. Yeah. I have yeah. a weird rash on I'm the back of my arm. Stuff. I'm like, I stopped using deodorant altogether for the last week or so, just because there's like, it's something itchy back there. Hmm. I have mm. not had, I have not worn deodorant. I don't think in two months. Because yeah, of this I in a while. thing I under my arm, really. at least since January, for like since you know what I've been using is jock itch spray. I use jock because it draws it out. That's what jock is. There you go. I can see the that or the monkey butt. 
Maybe have you ever heard cookies. of monkey butt powder? Monkey, monkey butt powder butt. is when you get like swamp ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting that under my face. Yeah. <laughs> That's some southern shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta put a little, you know, put a little powder. <laughs> you can't have swamp ass. ass and you can't have swamp pits when you're you southern. You just not acceptable. Yeah, no, we can't be doing that. <laughs> I have been <laughs> where in the swamp. I have been sporadically using deodorant since COVID quarantine, the initial quarantine. I have, I kind of stopped using it yeah. altogether. And then I sporadically introduce it on stressful days. On a day yes. that I know that's going to be stressful, then I put on my deodorant because it will be stinky. <laughs> <laughs> I only wear it if I'm going out in public. That's it. And that's how I've been with a bra. <laughs> oh my god. I think oh, I've been brawling more than once I'm, in the grocery store. I yeah, mean COVID please. just I just got rid of the whole bra situation in COVID. Yeah, we're not doing that. Those things are no done. makeup, no bras. We're like, not ladies anymore. We're no longer late. We're farm animals. We are <laughs> animals. That's what COVID did to us. Amazing. This is oh, perfect. Okay. You guys ready? <laughs> yeah, give me a give me five seconds and then you're good. You're good to go. You know everything you gotta say. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the Crime Diner. We are a Jersey podcast, and on the menu is a variety of true crime, cults, mysteries, historical hilarities, and sometimes victim stories. We do this within a Dinner with Friends theme. I'm Media. I'm Dana. I'm Cindy. Last week, Dana told us about Marianne Cotton. Yeah, Marianne Cotton was the first female, or the first serial killer in England that we know of. Whether you believe she was guilty or not, or whether she killed one person or 21 people. Um, but we we told the story of her and her poisoning and her botched execution. That was terrible. Yeah. Um, this week, joining us is Anne. I'm going to say that again. Okay. <laughs> that sounded like I was nervous. <laughs> this week, joining us this week is Anne and a nice Karen of <laughs> Sugar Coated Murders podcast. You can't be uh, sugar-coated and be a mean Karen, right? I mean, the jury's out on that one. <laughs> the jury's out. Okay. I think that a mean Karen would sugarcoat anything. Oh, so true. So yes. true. Can we take a vote at the end of the episode and see what we think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is she mean? That might be a good idea. Yeah. And please do not consult with my family. <laughs> <laughs> We'd never dare. <laughs> We're going to get to their story, or should we have them talk? <laughs> no, 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 we'll, we'll get to their story. We're going to get to their story, but first, the food, let us pray. Oh, I thought we used to, what? You're going to put it in? Oh, it? Put it? <laughs> so you guys know that there's a little prayer that we include and all of that, so I'm going to do the unveiling right now. Okay. Are you guys eating with us or? Yes, but we're not yeah. We're not going to put our plates down until you see what's on your plate. Okay, all right, all right. Oh, it's a Sammy. What do we got going on here? Ooh. Okay, hold up. There's potatoes and what kind of sandwich is this? Potatoes and a sandwich. Is this a hot dog? <laughs> is this hot dogs? It's chipped beef. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a sausage or a hot dog? What's happening? You can't wait until I uh, calm down, woman. All right. calm, <laughs> calm down. Don't panic. I forgot you can eat for these. I see encased meat on my plate, so I can I um <laughs> can I have some utensils? No. Why? Oh, pretty. She put strawberry. Why don't you? You don't want case I'm meat. Well, I don't know how I feel about case meat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dana, let me have your plate so I can show them. You You're case it. meat sensitive. I am, yeah. I'm a little touchy about this. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> oh, yes. That looks so good. That's what I was right, right. Look at. Mm. Yeah, totally. Oh, yours utensils. looks pretty good, too. All right. Do you want to tell us what, what is this? So this you guys is want to tell us what the menu is for today? Yes. yes. So for the sandwich, we're having a sailor sandwich. And the sailor sandwich is only you, you only get them in Richmond, Virginia, which is where we spend a lot of our free time. Yeah, our parents <laughs> lived there, but growing up, that was 
uh, place. That was like when we would go to Richmond, it was like us going to the big city. And I okay. lived there for a long period of time. So we had a Jewish deli there called the New York Deli, and they had these sailor sandwiches. And it's just pastrami, not worse, spicy mustard, and rye bread. And Swiss cheese. Oh, and Swiss cheese. Don't forget the Swiss. Don't forget the cheese. Yeah. And yeah. you yeah. did the. And then we did um, smashed new potatoes mm. with that. Yeah, and then for dessert, look what Annie made. Well, mine's got a big bowl in it. Well, I think <laughs> <laughs> a chocolate kiss in the yeah, middle. Yeah, she put a chocolate kiss. But aren't these cute little ramekins? They're, They're so adorable. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to dessert. I don't know. Did you you call this knockwurst? Knockwurst. Yes, yeah, it's like I a, don't know if I've ever eaten that before. It's I'm a excited little, for you. It's a little different from a bratwurst because initially I couldn't find uh, the knockwurst. Uh huh. Uh, but I did find, but I found bratwurst. So I, I was like, I can't find the other thing. So I'm just going to do the knockwurst, uh -huh. you know, the bratwurst. And then I found it hidden in a special part of the specialty deli items. Yeah. And that's where it was. And it's um, very similar to kind of like a hot dog flavor. It, it looks like a hot dog. Yeah. 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 Like but it's got more of a bologna flavor to me. I think so too. Yeah, that bologna. Well, I mean, yeah. bologna is a flat hot dog in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like a flat hot dog to me. Uh -huh. Me too. <laughs> All right, well, let's dig in then. I'm already there. I know she's already eating. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh my god, this is so good. All right. Oh, and great drinks. Oh yeah, tell us about the drink. The drinks are bourbon and and simply apple apple juice over crushed ice. Ooh. So it's I just actually, something that we we started drinking. I don't know. We just there's there's no name to this. I think we made it up. <laughs> this is a we could signature call it sugar coated murder drink. <laughs> <laughs> bourbon is so so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, bourbon is so so. So it's delicious. Mm-hmm. I did add a little splash of lemon juice to it because I know how y'all are very particular and I tasted it. I was like, y'all can't handle this drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's really good. You did a fantastic It just reminds me of when we were growing up. I know. That's all. So it never caught on in any of the city. Like, you know, I know. The only place I've ever been where there's been a sailor on a menu is in Richmond. It's true. I mean, even in Richmond, you have to find the restaurant that's got yeah. them on your, they're not I'm like on every menu. So I'm gonna say one thing. Um and it's hard to hear you. Mm -hmm. Karen, can you take your mic and put it like maybe on your on your arm, clip it on your arm so that way on the other arm next to her. So you, so you uh, next so to her. So to pick both of y'all up at the same time. Yeah. Put it on one of your chins. <laughs> Can you tell their sisters? That's so rude because I've got way more chins than you do. Okay, so on other podcasts, I'm very soft-spoken and I don't mean to be. I'm not oh, using I hear you anything. now. Yeah. I hear you now. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Did you chase the potatoes? Delicious. I did. God, yeah. Dana gives me such a hard time about any in case me stuff. Uh. And I've been pushing the envelope this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started out with jambalaya, which has um which case had, in case me, yeah. then last week I made a uh, toad in a hole, which is a UK recipe. It's also in case me. And then this oh. week. <laughs> yeah. this what week, is toad in a hole? I don't even know if I want to know. <laughs> it was a sausage in a Yorkshire pudding. Oh, oh that's really pushing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like look like a giant dick on top of a pie. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. They tried to give her dick pie. She did not want the dick pie. I wouldn't eat dick pie either. <laughs> no. No, no, that's gross. 
I love pastrami. I do. I've never really yeah. had pastrami. I really, really wish that you had told me there was an issue with encased meats. We could have done something different. No, they don't mind torture me at all. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> I've been catering to them for three years. It is my turn. It is my so turn hard. to fully torture them. <laughs> oh, I've been doing it all along. <laughs> I usually take turns though on torturing y'all. Mm -hmm. This is like just the right amount of salty. Mm -hmm. And then this is just the right amount of sweet. The potatoes are killer. The potatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When you're in Sydney's house, you have to call them potatoes. Potatoes, yeah. <laughs> Didn't you have a kid that called them? My potatoes? daughter, she thought they were potatoes for the longest <laughs> time. So when we would do vocabulary words, I'd say, spell potato. And she would start with a B every time. I'm like, no, babe, it's potatoes. She's like, mom, it's potatoes. <laughs> no. Did you ever see that TikTok or the, the little video of the boy who's doing his vocabulary words and he's spelling garbage and he spells it G-A-R-B-I-T-C-H and he's like, B-I-T-C-H, garbage. <laughs> That's like, I've never That's seen like, that. That's adorable. <laughs> like, sound it out, baby. <laughs> Is that what you said today? Mm -mm. Oh. I can't open TikTok at work. Oh, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. What are I doing today? Oh, that's because you must be on the on the school Wi-Fi. You know, all the government buildings is black and the what? Yeah, the TikTok. Mm -hmm. Lord, if when that happens down here, my husband's going to have a heart attack. We <laughs> <laughs> don't have to go into rehab. He's a teacher too, but he is addicted to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Girl, this bitch potato are good. Oh, oh it's about it Europe. <laughs> it's about Europe. The girl's like, oh, uh, her. And I, I just was laughing because the one tooth, there's one I tooth. Said, like, Why are you laughing? Because it is a country. It's a country inside countries, is it not? Want to go to Scotland and Ireland? There's more countries. Europe is a country. Europe is a country. Europe is a country. Oh, she's missing a tube. No. Europe, you know. It's my um, English is not my first language. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> so I always get confused with Europe and England. I always get confused. With those <laughs> we we let's we show baby. We did not. We were not born in in continental U.S. Right. We don't need to know all the ge geography <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, I kind of agree with that. I mean, we you made, just like, need to. You need to know where you're from. That's it. <laughs> exactly. We made assholes of ourselves like very early on on the podcast, not knowing where anything is in any other country ever. <laughs> oh, and then we just continued with it. And we just doubled down. On it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why learn now? Right. I mean, for real. <laughs> but I was shocked when she said there was 50 countries inside of Europe. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> and then it was like seven. <laughs> but I think my well, she was this confusing was I Europe can't... with the UK, which is what this one does all the time. No. She was confusing Europe with England, I guarantee you. She was confusing Europe. continent with country. country yeah. Yes, but also, you know, it's a country within the country. The UK is is a kingdom that has multiple countries within it. That's what I'm saying. She uh, was confusing okay. yeah, right. uh -huh. because the UK is built up of England Half of Ireland, Scotland, go. and Wales. See, I know some geography mm -hmm. now what? because of the Must podcast after we got it wrong. Mustard? Mm -hmm. Spicy mustard? Mm -hmm. You can taste that. That's you good. Taste it. Now, the meat to bread ratio, 
I'm I need a thicker bread. If I'm gonna have this much meat in my mouth, I need a thicker bread. <laughs> oh yeah. There needs to be a bigger, thicker mattress. <laughs> that sounds like a personal issue. It is always <laughs> always a personal issue over here. Meanwhile, so, she is tearing it down. I see so that. I'm happy with I prefer a lot more meat than bread. Really? Honestly. We should talk about it when we get back. Yeah, I agree. You do need um you want to get um some scones for that. Mountain of times we've gone up and down these steps in the past today. I mean, I did it only once, but I had plenty of people coming up and down the steps for me today. <laughs> <laughs> it's exhausting when you have people coming up and down the steps for you all day. I mean, so we're in the basement of my house uh -huh. and um that's where it's all that's where we set up and the kitchen's right up at the top of the steps it's just like i really don't want to keep going up <laughs> it's so uh, funny that season one was at my house <laughs> season two was at dana's house and season three is on in cindy's house right, well so where is season, season four gonna be <laughs> We've done all the houses now. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> For the grand finale, I'm going to murder the two of them. <laughs> On Patreon. <laughs> we got a picture of you already dead. So yeah. there you go. Right. So dead men tell no tales. Go ahead and taste your, mm -hmm. your souffle. Is this a souffle? Sure. Call it that. Okay. <laughs> it's a mousse. <laughs> It's definitely very gooey. The lava cake? Is that what kind of, to a certain yeah. level it is. The very center is so gooey. Gooey. Yeah, it's supposed to be a gooey center. Mm -hmm. okay. Which I kind of like. Not plain vanilla. Mm. Mm -mm. Girl. Oh, no. Somebody bought Kilo Vanilla from us. I did. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And I did use it in these cakes. And I took a picture with it. Oh, thank you. My goodness. Cindy it makes push. everything so much better. I got you. I got you. I got you. I, I know yes. you do. Oh, we, oh, so when we come back and do the banter. Could have took the lettuce off this stuff. <laughs> it was all part of the picture. We need color. <laughs> the lettuce. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the tops are called. <laughs> you mean the strawberry leaves? <laughs> Can you hear her better now? Hello, hello. Say it again. Can you hear me better? No. You're like, you sound like you're underwater for some reason. Uh -huh. So weird. Mother of God. <laughs> Mother it's probably of picking God. it up on your end. We're just having a hard time hearing it. No, I, no have this problem. I have this problem all the time. All the time. Uh, sometimes, like, <laughs> sometimes like when you're, depending on how close you are to the computer, you like just can't hear it that well for some reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, we're right here. Like this is, I mean, like this is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah. I actually, when it came to the <laughs> mics on the computer, I mean, you guys are recording the audio on the, through the computer for the, for us, but the, um, I saw, I had to, for our Zoom event, for little Zoom stuff that we do for the pod, for the Patreon, we have, I have a mic and I ended up stopped using it because it was actually worked better on the, on the audio from the computer. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. But so we have depend. to wear these, we have to wear these lavalier mics because when we're in the kitchen cooking and the other person's right over here, like, you know, it's, it wasn't, we had just a regular like stand mic for a long yeah. time. And you could totally tell when the person was in the kitchen, they were like far away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's that? Yeah, we have um I I bought one for when I was doing uh cooking videos. I have one for when I was doing oh, cooking God. videos, and then I so that's what I have, but it's for my phone, so I can walk around the kitchen with and doing stuff and say right. stuff. But I stopped doing the cooking videos. Yeah, technology right, is our biggest struggle. We are technologically we're so behind. We we always struggle with technology. <laughs> well, once before we really get any deep diving into this whole thing, should we try it without the mics to see if that's any better? Yeah, and just use the computer mic. Do you want us to try it? Yeah, if you yeah. want, to, if you want to give it a shot, but it's it's up to you. If if it works better with the mics, then you know. But it's up to you if you want to give it a shot. We're not. This part won't air anyway, so it's fine if you want to give it a shot. Just unplug it. 
Or I can just hold it close to me. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't change it at all for some reason. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And it makes me yeah. wonder. If <laughs> even That's the same. I wonder if in your settings you have her turned down too much. Uh huh. I, yeah, I like that would be thing. just that would be just like her well that's true <laughs> that's not on at all that's the problem there's you no... know what video here is usually turned way up yeah we have to turn to, we have to keep turning her down yeah <laughs> Nidia is like way too loud i'm not soft spoken remember last week i had trouble with this one i think this one is dead i think it died a horrible death <laughs> we need to slow painful death okay hold on hold on yeah absolutely do what you gotta do sorry it's all Anne's fault I swear it is <laughs> it's like I'm the shy one why y'all gotta put me on the spot <laughs> wait she's the what <laughs> shy one to do that me so, too does. yeah and how are you doing I feel like I'm good Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is that better? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's yeah. weird. It's like it's hard. She's very crisp and clear, but you seem like underwater for some reason. It's weird. Oh, and you know you? what? We used to have that problem with Dana. We had mm -hmm. to have Dana do something with her mics too. Yeah, on her laptop. You need to go back to voice lessons. Shut up. She was <laughs> taking some voice training because she had some issues with her voice for a while for like a year for three years i had a colonoscopy she did and, and when i came out of it i had no voice what oh <laughs> right. she said she had a colonoscopy how yeah. many how, did I, they I go through your throat, throat? And they went down the wrong end <laughs> evidently when i was having my um when i was having my colonoscopy they overinflated something that caused a gag that caused a gag reflex and it, it was the beginning of covid so they had a mask my mask that i wore from home on me in the room where they were performing the procedure and didn't realize that i had vomited oh so i aspirated that down my throat and it oh. burns everything all the way down so for what a month I had no voice and then it finally started coming back it was so frustrating and a couple of years after my voice has been very scratchy and from the trauma of whatever happened during the colonoscopy episode my muscles in my throat overcompensated and it causes my voice to be hoarse but I can go to voice therapy <laughs> I'm gonna have to tell my wife about this. They can try and retrain me to do it. And if I could do some exercises, it helps a lot, but I don't think it helps me with volume. I think it does more than she just wants me to spend more money. And I don't I don't feel oh. like I need I'm gonna YouTube video until it's better. <laughs> <laughs> did 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 you sue? No. This guy's really good looking. He's so handsome. So cute. Like he is this hot Latino I doctor mean, that is like such a god that you just can't sue him. No. And like mm -mm. that was gross negligence. <laughs> you oh, would have no. died. For I real. They should at the very least be paid <laughs> for your voice uh therapy. Exactly. My wife is actually a speech pathologist. Uh, so yeah. that's one of the people that you would probably see for that kind of yes. therapy. Yes, they were sending me to a speech pathologist. Yes, she probably yeah. knows all about it. So, wow. Maybe she can send you some videos of what to do. <laughs> Could she do some free videos of what to do? Fine. <laughs> Fine. I'll send you wow. That is so crazy. I hope he at least bought you dinner. <laughs> no. no, I did get a hug from him. I got several hugs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the little things. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't tell you how handsome this man is. He's so I love him. He looks like somebody that would be on Grey's Anatomy. Very hot. So hot. <laughs> like, you just can't help it. You can't help it. And you just look so hot, doctor. No. No. Strangled me, but I survived. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. no, nobody's mad at a good strangling. 
They are lost to be choked. <laughs> All right, we ready? Ready. Mike? Wait, we gotta wait for Anna. I'm sorry, she's trying to get her dog under control. I know you can hear no her in the background. I put my dog upstairs all the way at the top floor and I closed off the bedroom because I was like, no, she can't just be on the second floor because she's just going to be like going up and down the steps and then we're going to hear her. And whining but he and really gets, he does not like other people. Well, he doesn't like our podcast. I mean, that's just all there is to it. He doesn't like it. He tries to sabotage every episode. I'm just telling you right now, he's a control freak. <laughs> He's not a fan. I think our next door. Uh, yeah, we can hear a dog barking next door. But that's next door. I can't hear the dog barking, but all I can hear is this one whining. He's a bully, this one. Yeah, we couldn't hear him. Oh, you can't? Okay. Well, you might pick him up on our end when you, because okay. he does come through on the podcast sometimes. So. That's all right. We love a pod dog. <laughs> Nydia's dogs used to snore into the microphones really loud. Aww, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, okay so we'll come back. We'll talk about the food. Do we need, if you want to wear them, mm -hmm. helps with the topping and stuff, but I'm the yeah. fidgeter, so. All right, ready? <clears throat> okay, so this is called a sailor sandwich, you said? Yes. I loved it. It was like a salty, it had like a salty flavoring. Yeah. Like the meats were salty and the cheese was salty, so it had like a little edge to it saltiness so it remind me of like a sailor something that this a sailor oh from have. the sea yeah, I have salty see. i see i love the spicy mustard whatever like little kick i wouldn't really call it a kick but you know the little flavoring of the spicy but just it was so good mm -hmm. i and i you know i you know how i feel about encased meats you know it was <laughs> fine but um i would eat a eat this again it eat a certainly pastrami i never really oh. eat pastrami but this is so good i'm um, so glad so i really like to put sauerkraut on them when i like oh. if i make them they're so it's to me it just kicks it up but it doesn't it's not a true sailor if i put sauerkraut on it so i'm not allowed gotcha gotcha <laughs> i was wondering why there wasn't a vegetable i'm sorry say that we even eat no, we just decided, you know, to do something different, but we don't normally eat. We don't, I mean, we really don't even normally eat this. No, we're not, not worse. Or it's, it's not something that we would normally eat. So it was a special occasion. Special. Oh, yeah. so good. It would be so good with uh, sauerkraut. I, that's, that feels like the right move. Absolutely. Yes. Area, it really kicks it up a notch. We're going to, we're going to open a restaurant and we're going to steal your Virginia sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I'm at it. I've been asking you guys for, uh, I think three years now to please open a restaurant. <laughs> um, I would totally come and eat at your diner any day. <laughs> I would fly up to New Jersey just to eat at that diner. You're just going to have to come up. My doors are open. So there you go. Oh, oh, did you say good. your drawers or your doors? So what did you say? Um, so what what would you call this dessert? I would call this dessert a double fudge cake. But I the reason why I picked it is because it's close to Valentine's Day and it's a recipe that only makes two cakes and you make them in ramekins. So it's it if you're only a two person situation or if you're one mm. person that likes a second helping, <laughs> yeah. then you don't have all this extra all this extra stuff at Valentine's Day. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's delicious. It's very rich. Uh we love a little strawberry. Cindy left all of the lettuce on top. It was very rude of her, I thought. <laughs> um it looked great in pictures. <laughs> I get that you eat with your eyes first. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, would, would I suggest a little ice cream? Sure, maybe, but like, <laughs> no, you know, definitely. who am I to poo-poo you and your, your, it's almost, I wouldn't call it a souffle, but it's, it's a more like a lava cake. Like it's kind of like yeah. gooey in the middle. It's delicious. It's really sweet. The drink, I finished mine. Um, <laughs> I am not a bourbon girl. Not a bourbon girl. I could drink that. I think it was it was very tasty, but I I can't do something so sweet. 
Like, I can't have both. Well, she's very finicky about her alcoholic <laughs> beverages. Yeah. They can't be sweet. They just remind me of a terrible hangover. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's so, unfortunate. So just to let you know, we use the simply apple apple juice because it's just pressed apples and there's no extra sugar to yeah. it. That's one of the reasons that why why we use it. But I agree with you. If if I if I'm drinking bourbon on my own, I just put it over ice. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm just a straight bourbon girl. <laughs> <laughs> is this simply yeah. apple or is this just regular apple juice? This is regular apple juice yeah. that I, I can't even remember. I, I didn't get the simply because I was like, oh, I have apple juice at the house. I'm going to use yeah, it. Simply <laughs> apple juice literally tastes like you took a bite of an apple. It's really, yeah. it is, sour? it's, it's, no, it tastes like apples like you know apple juice doesn't really taste like apples right. simply <laughs> apple just tastes like a fucking apple it's the weirdest thing well, it does. It's what's apple juice is supposed to i know but like when you drink out it looks like apple juice and you go to drink it and your brain is like that's an apple it's the weirdest really yeah it's really really good like because mm -hmm. i'm not that i do or don't like apple juice I, i'm not a big juice drinker like i don't right. really drink orange juice or any juices but like it just tastes like an apple. It's straight. It's like Snapple apple. Like you ever like, you ever drink Snapple yeah. apple? It tastes like an apple. It's, it's very strange. So strange. Yeah. When you actually get apple juice that tastes like the like fruit. it was a pressed apple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and that's know, what like, this is. And even the juice is cloudy because it is just pressed apples. So it's yeah. like a cloudier juice. It's not like mm -hmm. apple juice is very crisp and uh -huh. clean, but this. This stuff, like you have to shake it up because there's a sediment that forms at the bottom. That's just the apple. <laughs> there's like apple yeah. pulp in there. <laughs> yeah, that might have changed the way that this drink tasted for you because it would not be so like apple juice, like sweet. I it also added sweet. a little bit of lemon juice to this. Yeah, just for the sake of yeah. This yeah. episode brought to you by the Apple Farmers Association. <laughs> Yeah, not um, yet a sponsor, but we're open to talks. <laughs> <laughs> um, a bunch of roasted potatoes, sort of like a hash brown situation. Fucking slam, and they were so good. Oh my god! Yeah, yes, yeah. please and thank you. Um, but I also used Killa Vanilla for the um for the cakes. Okay, now tell us about that. There's a super amount of static on the line. Oh, okay. so Say it again. I also use the Killa Vanilla that is uh, a small batch bourbon-based vanilla. Yes. And it is made by Sugar Coated Murders. Oh, oh yeah, really? Look at that. Yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> so yeah. they have a small business. So oh. they actually, that they make that. And I ordered it some time ago. And I used, used it years ago, right? No, I just got it last year. But oh, okay, I've been using year. it, like, I, I only use it for very particular and special recipes. Um, so, like, I use it today because, you know, they're here. Let, let me use their yeah. stuff. Right. And um, I use it for a strawberry shortcake that I did for my father-in-law. And he loved the cake, the best thing he's ever had. So, I think it works. Yeah. I think yeah. it works really well. <laughs> It's a favorite. Kudos. That's awesome. Is that the only like spice that you have? I don't know if it's a spice, but do you have more than one or is that what you guys That's sell? That's the only one we have because it, it uses bourbon and we love bourbon. We, we, <laughs> have, we have recently crossed a recipe for a bourbon caramel sauce. Yes. Oh. And we're thinking about trying to find a way to package that. That's incredible. It is so much. Oh, caramel sauce. Caramel sauce. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, that sounds so good. With that one, yeah, because it has to be refrigerated. It's not going to have a Oh, it sugar. does? Yeah. Ugh. It's over. We're not doing it. <laughs> That's it. Everyone's fired. <laughs> Everyone's fired. The caramel, the caramel plant has officially been closed. <laughs> Everyone gets their job. It's a nightmare. <laughs> um, you guys also wrote a book. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes, our book is called Click, Click, Click. And you can get it on Barnes & Noble online or Amazon, either one. And um, I mean, we're true crime podcasters, so we do a lot of crime cases. And we come from a really small town in southeastern Virginia where um, there were a lot of murders. But the crazy part is we knew the murderers. Yeah. We oh, do. snap. 
So this is one of the cases that we covered from our small town that is about some high school kids that meet up on a Friday night, a quiet Friday night in town um, in this kind of dark field between two schools. And two of them come out alive and one of them doesn't. Uh oh. Now, would and you say you live in a sleepy village? It's a sleepy <laughs> town. Sleepy, <laughs> yes. It's it's a. I would say. How would you describe Twin Peaks? Yeah. Did you ever watch Twin Peaks? <laughs> <laughs> Is that sleepy little town? I think it's kind of quirky, sleepy. Yeah, kind of like gotcha. that. Kind of their own dialect. Yeah. Was it a regular day? <laughs> no, so it was a dark. It was, it was a, a dark, dark, dark and stormy. It was a very dark <laughs> February. Very night. dark February night. Yes. It oh, was. Geez, but the crazy part is, so for two and a half years, nobody knew what happened to this kid. Mm. Nobody. His parents thought he either ran away or was kidnapped. Oh, there that's was, tragic. There were um, missing person's posters all over town like literally he vanished he went out one night kissed his mom goodbye and went out on a friday night and just disappeared and for two and a half years nobody knew what happened to him until there was a confession really yeah that's so sad so oh my god i, I must yeah we have more no yeah, yeah. The book, sorry. The book. yeah. don't tell us anymore <laughs> I'll definitely read the book. I love true crime books. Not yeah. that I love that it happened, but I just like to. I'm a nosy person. Yeah, we like to hear yeah. you. It it's it is it's that that like voyeurism. Yeah, the voyeurism is such a good word. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah cool. that's a really good that's word. Good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. So we actually have started a series, and this book is the first of a series. But the series is called "Say My Name." because we have come across so many stories where the victims get lost in their own murder stories. And this was a really great example of that. This kid literally has just, was just forgotten. Um, and because of who the murderers were, the story was, all the stories are told based on them and not based on the victim. And we, we just decided we were gonna open up that can of worms and tell it the way it should have been told in honor this victim's memory and give him a permanent place in history because he deserved it. He needs a voice and we decided to be his voice. And it's so hard because when you research true crime, you, you find court documents and you've got, you know, stories from when the murder happened, when the, the court case went to trial, you have all of that information, but for the victims, a lot of times the only thing you have is the obituary. So you don't have a lot of information about the victim because their life ended and everything just stopped for them. But the murderer gets all the press. They get all of the notoriety, I guess, from the murder, which is so unfortunate. And with the Say My Name series, Karen and I are trying to bring a little bit of light to the victim. Now, we didn't know this victim personally, and we didn't have a lot to go on as far as deep diving into his life, but we want to make sure at the end of the book, you say his name. So at least we know for everybody that reads this book on the last page, they can see his name and a picture of him. And at least he's remembered that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's so heavy. That's, that's oh, like and such we, a heavy know, we're, undertaking. We're sugar-coated. So we also add in a little bit of Southern flavor from the town that we grew up in and all of the sisterly antics, how we got in trouble and had some unfortunate incidents with some police officers. Uh -oh. There's even a little story in there where um, we got to see Elizabeth Taylor in person at our church. So we, oh we do goodness. add a little bit of a little bit of humor into Really into the book story. yeah because we it's just it really is so heavy you, we didn't want it to be so very dark yeah, yeah. that makes sense did you have to yeah. get um the families you know okay or anything on that you don't everything um is now part of public record so you don't have to get anybody's permission to do it but we did have a conversation with the victim's brother one of the victim's brothers the victim's one of his brothers. One of the brothers of the victim. <laughs> and um, he really, the, one of the reasons that we wrote this story is because he felt like the town had forgotten about his brother. So he yeah. really wanted us to move forward. It was a little bit more difficult 
for his dad. Um, just, I think he's from an older generation and he was very worried about what we would say about the victim. Um, but no, you don't have to have permission from anybody. It's all public record. Yeah. Oh, and oh. I forgot to mention, we forgot to mention one of the murderers is very heavily involved in the telling of this story. Very heavily. Really? Mm-hmm. One of the murderers actually reached out to us and, oh, and shit. gave us a lot of detail about this murder. So we actually went and saw him and sat down with him face to face. In, in jail? No. no. But he lives back in that same town. Oh, fuck. Right. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, so for, no, if for nothing else, you need to find that story in the book and read what these two old ladies did. <laughs> Didn't tell the families. I am Didn't tell heavily intrigued. So, yeah, yeah we're de- I'm family. definitely going to check that out. I think you guys should. You guys Golden should Girls. Yeah, it was like it was like the Golden Girls on the 007 mission. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love that. I want to do that with you guys. I want to solve a case. Well, they didn't solve it. No, I know, but I, I, I'd like to solve a case. You want to solve, you want to solve a murder? Something Scooby Doo style, like okay. Know, I want to get a minivan. We got to get the van, definitely. Yeah. As long as Cindy's making cakes and shit for me, I'm cool with it. Yeah, she brings the snacks. So yeah. basically, Scooby it's snacks. a basically yeah. it's a food truck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, an idea has been born. Yes. And it's now cotton. So yes. Trademark, trademark. Okay. Yes. Trademark, trademark, copyright, copyright. We got it. We got it. Yeah. Uh you had something you want to talk about? Yes. Um, I had recently okay, so we have these like daily meetings at work. Uh-huh. I teach her, right? It's a professional okay. setting. And I told people, like, they're like, oh, you know, what are you doing this afternoon? And I'm like, oh, well, I'm, I'm training, I'm training my crows. (laughs) So, um, so I mentioned that I have this plan till the end of the year, and it's to train my crows. I have crows that hang out outside my, my classroom window and, um, in a tree. (laughs) And I want the crows to be at my back and call. She wants them to do her bidding. I want them to recognize my face. Crows are very smart. And they are. so I happen to mention this at a freaking professional setting. And now people don't respect me professionally that much anymore. <laughs> I don't, you know what? They're going to respect you when you have those crows carrying your books in every day, aren't they? <laughs> they're, they're, hovering, they're hovering one foot above your head. <laughs> <laughs> the watch your car every day they better respect me they better respect me then definitely oh. so i've been training them with little shiny pieces of paper clips and like are they coming up to it and everything yes and yeah. i i've been leaving them food apples things like bird that seed, things like this well no i'm not on the bird seeds yet okay um but i probably should get bird seeds but i've yeah. been giving them actual food yeah they like it and yeah are they yeah. eating it they take they're it? eating it oh they're shit eating it. they're eating right out of my hand you could say like actually no not yet no not yet <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna i'm telling you you should oh, get I'm a framed wait. picture of cindy and i and put them out there so that the birds will recognize us as well us, yes yeah. and it'll be like a whole bird gang <laughs> <laughs> this all came about from a patreon episode that we just recorded and posted oh is that on patreon that's on patreon okay. so there's like uh if you want to know more that's basically where you would find out where nidia got the the idea to the train realization crows. that we can train these crows <laughs> train crows people train crows so i would like to talk to you about professional settings as well you know i've been off work for six weeks mm-hmm. and tragically that has ended and i have to go back to work so oh. today this today was my first day back to work. But earlier this week, we had, I had to go to orientation. So I've been at this job for over a decade, 13 years. Ooh, wow. I, I've been to the orientation at least 10 times. They do it every year. And my the company I work for is a, a hotel, essentially. And it's a, it's a bunch of hotels. But when I started working there, it was like maybe five hotels. Now there's like 10 of them. And they're really moving towards becoming a more of a corporation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which that's great. This is great news. This is good for business. That's great. You know, it kills my 
socialist soul. Yeah, my like anarchy soul. <laughs> like it just there's like you know it just kills me a smidge in my in my deep deep heart. But whatever, you know, I live in a capitalist society. I have to pay my bills. Right. So here we go. And so I I go to this meeting. I, you have to be there. It, you know, they were like, you can start clocking in at nine, but the thing starts till ten. So I walked in at nine fifty nine like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> um they did this whole thing and there was a dj and it was like there was, oh shit yes but each, there was a 350 people there they were like just like it, but did they it have... was like did you see did you ever see the movie role models yes okay you know when they got he's like a, a red bull like salesman sort yeah. of it was like that like people were on stage being like ooh, 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 ooh. like okay, it was crazy but did they have a lady gaga with a, a person throwing up on their tits no the first speaker was, <laughs> that's, how, that's how you know you're at an event the first speaker was wearing a chicken costume uh-huh and pr- proceeded to do their entire speech dressed as a chicken and his assistant was dressed as an egg because they're from the farm and then literally nothing they talked about was about chickens or eggs or farms it was about like being a good employee, essentially. It was very crazy. I was like, oh, you a grown up thought this morning when you woke up to get in a chicken costume and then speak to an audience. Like it was, cra- and that was not the craziest thing that happened, but most of it was funny. A lot of it was tone, like in my opinion, in my opinion, some of it was tone deaf, but like also that I am coming from a very like lefty side. So like, uh-huh. it's a business, it, you know, whatever. It was, it's fine. That being said, they're really pushing this whole like um you have to dress a certain way and act a certain way and blah blah blah. professional appearance professional yeah which i totally understand right that being said i have a, half of my head is shaved i have piercings you know everyone's got tattoos but like, you know we still like have some decorum you know right. what i mean so the next day we are having the meeting at the spa where my boss who listens to this podcast hello <laughs> i know you're listening Uh-oh. um i love you <laughs> yes she, be best friend. she also loves video she like if if you like we're gonna assign yourself as a character from the show my boss is a nidia 100 oh, yeah it's awesome though. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so she's like you know and she's cool she's so chill you know for the most yeah, part she's you know, my best friend yeah right but she's got a job to do and i totally right. understand that you know, it's not her fault. I'm the coolest person in the spa. You know, I, what do you want me to do? So, I agree. She wants you to change. <laughs> it's really clear what she wants you to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, you know, I, I've been sort of laxed over the years about, you know, tattoos and the way you guys draw, you know, just, these are the pants you gotta wear. The, you know, you have to wear black shoes. Yeah. You get no yoga pants, no stretch pants, like whatever. And like, all of that's fine. And she's like, and you're supposed to wear your hair, like super neat, like and that day I was in the orientation <laughs> I was in like sw- like not sweatpants but like right. joggers like a shirt like a button down like tank top whatever or not tank top a, t- a t-shirt uh-huh. and my hair was like literally I hadn't washed in like seven or eight days like it was just in a messy <laughs> dirty bun you know uh-huh. and um, so you're professional dress yeah but I was <laughs> in the and I asked the day before I'm like we don't have to wear our uniforms or anything okay. she's like no and she's like not to like call anyone out and then look dead at me <laughs> and she's like but like hair is a little you know just like you know your your messy bun's cute like I think it's cute but like you're gonna have to like tuck that in and I'm like let me tell you something about my messy bun and tuck so it this, in. Is what, this is what it looked like today this is not like as uh-huh. like I kind of like try to because you know it's usually a pretty wild yeah but like I have my hair is pretty curly and I've been trying to like cultivate the curl it's a it's a vibe I'm working with you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> so it's like sort of tucked back but I'm like this bitch called me out in front of everybody. <laughs> the whole spa was like, hmm. <laughs> I mean, I think she should have just asked you to use some dry shampoo and go. Oh, I don't think it was the dirtiness that it was. It was, <laughs> it was the dirty. It was just, my was bun was like everywhere. Like it was just, it's, you know, I don't wash it a lot because I'm trying to like get this curl going. <laughs> and yeah. the more I wash it, the more like flat it gets. So it's like, you know, it's a bummer. So I get it. Like, I got to tighten it up a little bit. So it about. wasn't the flyaways. It was the actual flies. <laughs> <laughs> so can I ask a question? Can we get back to the chicken and the egg? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was there a subliminal message there that he laid his assistant? <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> 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 
I mean, I'm just asking because you said nothing in his in their in their presentation. It made I mean, no sense. It was very strong. Gag. So I'm like, was there a subliminal message that he laid her? Oh my God! The way I am spreading that rumor Monday morning. <laughs> no idea. The way that rumor will be hot goss by Friday. <laughs> I will say, I will say, in New Jersey, well, in this area of New Jersey, some meetings that should be professional are not always as professional as they should be. Yeah, yeah. We had the mayor of a major city in this area. Yeah, dress up fully at for his uh what do you call it the, and uh, it wasn't even the the state of the kind of like the state of the union but the state of the the city. city address that he does each year he dressed up as a full-on robot came <laughs> out like lit up and moving like a robot and they had like let let's go the champ or something like that oh, yeah. in the background like everybody is dead. oh no 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 well, <laughs> but he's like he's like dressed up as this robot he's a, you know they're doing this big old thing and all of this it was just like wow that's interesting no New Jersey's wild brother yeah, <laughs> did they send yeah. him did they send him to rehab the next day or anything? no oh no, no. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, not even a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm raising crows. I love that. I, I'm so excited to meet these crows. I am so excited. Can you please name them Karen and Ann? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's got plenty of them. I'm sure she can name a couple we, of Karen and Ann. We have been kicking around the idea of getting chickens. Yeah. Because oh, eggs yeah. are so expensive. Yes. And uh, my friend has a, a space for it. And so we really have been actually, we've been sending back and forth chicken coops and yeah. like how this is going to work. And Nydia had some pretty good names for the chicken. So we, yeah, can like add, we certainly can add Karen like to the A list. good name for a chicken is Fricassee, Patty, <laughs> Nugget. <laughs> yeah, those are really good names. Yeah, we'll write, we'll, we're, we have a running list, I think, at this point. <laughs> That's right. That's right. The chickens are going to be a thing. Yeah, I think the chicken should be a thing. Honestly, Listen, you're going to be egg rich. And that is a certain <laughs> wealth in this country that is top notch. Honestly, notch. we, you know, not that I can't, you know, not that I can't afford eggs, but I choose not to really like, I was eating eggs every morning. You know, I make myself breakfast in the morning. Right? Whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not going to buy eggs like that because they're just, it's very it's insane. Crazy. So we, I made a cake last week and I didn't have enough eggs. I had three eggs, but I needed four. And uh, I used unsweetened applesauce and it was fucking killer. Yeah, it was, yeah. Good. Yeah, it was killer. So, so take that egg industry. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now I will tell you, it does not work on cookies. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> My cookie was like flat. as like, oh. flat crispy pancake it still tasted good but it wasn't really a cookie you know <laughs> are we good do you have yeah, anything we're good we're good do you want to get into telling us your story absolutely all you right, better hold on it. to yourselves all right <laughs> <laughs> they do not know i know i'm so excited all for right. this Ooh. Sorry, Ty. I'm so situated here okay all right, do we need a drum roll or anything <laughs> <laughs> i can add one if you'd like <laughs> yeah you probably should we always need a drum roll. Yeah. Everybody does in their life. I wish I That's could wake true. up to a so drum true. roll every day. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what this murder case is, okay? But then Anne's going to start off talking about the beginning of the story. Okay, great. So here we go. We are going to talk about the Murdoch murder case going that is on trial right now here no. in South Kakalaki. Oh shit! Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know this story. Yes, I know this. Story. We've been like, oh. t like, uh, tentatively following this. You know, yes. not, not. I, I certainly haven't been deep dived into it, but like, tentatively, okay. so you know, many theories. Yes, yeah. yeah. So we, we actually, live stream it every day from start to finish. Oh shit! It, wow. is, it is going on in the background while I work. There's a separate laptop next to me, so I can hear everything that's going on at every minute of the day. Oh shit! <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It's All right, let's go. I have ever watched in my life. I think it's better than any 
courtroom drama show I've ever watched. Yeah. Seriously. It's, it's just been unbelievable. So a few things that, that your listeners may need to just write down or <laughs> try to follow through. Uh, the gentleman involved in this case, his name is Alec. It is spelled A-L-E-X. Most of us in the country pronounce it Alex, but from where he lives in that area, they call him Alex. So if we say Alex, it's because we know how to pronounce the freaking name. So they say their last name is Murda. It's M-U-R-D-A-U-H. They call him Murdoch. Murdoch. Right. They say Murdoch. Right. They say Murdoch. They say Murdoch. It's, it's, I think that when you get to a point in your life that you are so rich that you can make up your own phonics, you true. Really it's it. very true. <laughs> <laughs> and then a lot of people get confused about what SLED is. SLED, S L E D, is the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Okay. So it's the police. It's the police. Okay. All right. All right. right? <laughs> It's not, it's not some special unit. It's just the freaking police, but we got to have a fancy name and an acronym. So we call them SLED. Okay. So those, if you know that little bit of information. Oh, and then if you know that, that people in the South name their cars and um, they and give, guns. and they name their guns. And then a lot of people have nicknames like so if you can accept all of these things, <laughs> then you'll be able to follow along a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> all right. With my ADHD, I just realized that their name is Murda. <laughs> Murda. Yes. <laughs> very fitting. Very fitting. <laughs> Go ahead. I thought you were going to start. No, you said you were going to start, and then I was going to fill in. I said, no, I said that I was going to say what the murder was. I've That's almost finished my drink, and then when I, I just went out to walk my dog, things were a little lopsided, so forgive me if I yes. get confused. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had headbands too. Whoa, Lord. All right, so way back in 2019, we didn't know who the heck these people were. We had no idea but we live in a different part of the state than these people. These people live ever close to Hilton Head, South Carolina, and we're Charleston area. So, but I guess if you lived in that area, you knew who these people were, but they have a very, the Murdaws have a very long line of family that's been involved in the court systems. They're, um, what do they call them? Um, um. Shoot, there, it's almost like a magistrate of a like court. A, yeah. But anyway, so back in 2019, nobody had ever heard of these people. And then all of a sudden we started hearing news stories about a terrible boat crash where a, a young 19 year old kid and a bunch of his friends had been out on one of the creeks. We live around a lot of water here in South Carolina. And they had been out on the creek. A lot of them had been drinking a lot and they wrecked their boat. And when the boat wrecked, a couple of them were very severely hurt. And one girl was thrown overboard and they searched for her body for eight days and they finally found her. The fellow that was driving the boat was highly intoxicated. And he was the son of this very prestigious attorney, Alex Murdoch. <laughs> when the boat crash happened, um, SLED was called out to do an investigation to find out what happened. They, at this point, had not found the girl's body. Um, her, her name is Mallory Beach, 19 years old. Her boyfriend had been in the boat. Um, several of her friends were in the boat. And then Alex, his son, Paul, was the driver of the boat. And it was Alex's boat that was crashed. At the scene of the crash, 
and this is a very small community. So when it happened, somebody called Mallory's parents and told them what happened and they rushed to the scene of where this had happened. Also called were Paul's father, Alex, and his grandfather, Randolph. Randolph, but he, they, he went by Buster. Oh, Randolph, but he went by Buster, was also called, also an attorney um, and had been one of these court officials. Yeah, a like court official with the high um, picture hangs in the courthouse. Right. So okay. Okay. I would say he's king of the court. Right. <laughs> so he's the, he's the king of the court. That's right. So when when uh, Mallory Beach's parents get to the crime scene or the accident scene, they have to stand behind the yellow tape. They cannot go. And as they're standing there wondering what has happened to their daughter, Alex Murdoch, his wife Maggie, and Alex's father Randolph go under the police tape and go to talk to their son, who was the driver of the boat. And it was very disturbing and very upsetting to this family. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. This boat crash was horrible. He ran into one of the pilings under the bridge. Oh, and I mean, it destroyed that boat. And the kids that were injured, one, I mean, one of the kids had a broken jaw. Oh my God. I mean, and one girl had a serious injury to her hand. And of course, Mallory was ejected from the boat right. and they couldn't find her. Right. It was so. night. It was night time when this happened. They had been they had been out at an oyster roast, which is what people do around here all the time. They love to go to <laughs> oyster roast. And they had been to a bar and had some drinks. And um earlier in the day, they had gone to a convenience store. They have them, they're locally owned here called Parker's. And Paul used his brother Buster's ID to buy alcohol because he was only okay. 19, so he couldn't buy alcohol. Well, a huge investigation went in because Paul kept saying he, he didn't drive, he wasn't the driver of the boat. Now, Paul is wasted. They have the sled um, body camera video that has circulated since this crime has happened. And he, his father and his grandfather both approached some of the victims of the boat crash at the scene to say, Paul wasn't driving, right? It wasn't Paul driving. He even right. told one of them, if we say it's you, I can get more insurance money for everybody. Oh, if you yeah. say you were driving. He even went to the hospital to try and keep the victims in this accident from talking to police and telling them exactly what happened. So that was in 2019, and it was a really, really big deal. It was talked about a lot. It was in the media constantly because they're this very affluent family from Hampton County. It just was, there was a lot of press about it. And they started going to trial. Um, the family, a lot of times when you have an accident like this, Attorneys will tell the family to file a civil suit against um, people who they feel are responsible for the accident. So a civil suit was filed against Parker's for selling to underage Paul. A civil suit was filed against Paul and a civil suit was filed against Alex as the owner of the boat. And there's a bar where the kids are seen going into the bar and taking shots at the bar and then walking out and getting into the boat. Okay. So um, the bar was also named in the suit. Right. So yeah. it was a big deal. I mean, this family was under a lot of pressure. Well, when you get sued for a civil suit, it helps um, um, the, not the civil suit, but the criminal suit, because in a civil suit, you, you have to give all this information, all this documentation. And it's a way for the, for the criminal suit to get the information they need to to actually be out in front of a grand jury and say, yeah, we can do this on a criminal federal charge. Mm -hmm. So as time moves on, they, with the civil suits, they decide they need to get information from Alex's financial statements. And he, he's in a panic. He's got to open up the books. Now he, they have several homes, um, they live an incredible lifestyle. We're, we're seeing 
very much the lifestyle that they led, something that I can't relate to. I can't, I can't even fathom. Right. Because they had multiple homes. They had at least three. At least three. They had boats. They all had nice cars that, you know, lots of property. And so the media is really, as things start to heat up and spice up, things, things are really going in the media about who's responsible. And Parker's um, had big falutin attorneys and they managed to say, we don't have any responsibility. This guy came in, you know, shame on whoever. All we do is check an ID. We don't compare names or anything. So we have no accountability. And they were really nasty about the suit too. Of Mallory Beach's mom, her parents were suing them. And they pretty much came out at one point and said, Oh, this is not a real court, but they kind of said something like, You should have picked better friends. Oh, it was like, so tacky. So callous, the way that they responded to this suit. There was absolutely no compassion for this family who had lost their 19 year old daughter in a horrible accident. And the family wasn't looking to get rich, they were not. They 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 weren't looking to get rich. They just wanted somebody to be accountable for the death of their daughter. Yes, ma'am. I think too, like in especially in these cases with rich people that are going to like you can foresee that they're going to get off. You know that is yes. the way that you hit them in their wallet. You know you you sue them civilly. The you sue everybody involved. Like that's this is par for the course. This is the American justice system, like OJ Simpson or whatever. Like when these big, big rich people get off of these murders, like that's what happens. Well, yeah, it's yeah. also, it, it's also like a way to show, to prove that they were guilty. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. the yeah. only guilty verdict that, that Simpson got was during the civil, was during trial. The civil suit. Right. And exactly. other things came out during the civil trial right. that made yes. him in the public eye seem more guilty. Right. Yeah, if only that civil suit had happened before the criminal suit, it yeah. might have been a different verdict at the end. So, right. but I, but I I can tell you that Mallory Beach's parents, like Ann said, they weren't trying to get rich; they were trying to have somebody um, be responsible. But they also were really hurt about the way they were treated at the scene versus the way Paul's parents were treated at the scene. Completely right. different. I mean, the sled agents just lifted the tape and escorted these three people when this woman's on the shore looking for her daughter. Right. And they want to go talk to their inebriated son to make sure he doesn't talk to Sled. Like, but right. Sled is there and they're ushering him up. It's just, it's bizarre. Way, the son was so drunk, he had taken all of his clothes off at this point. He was just walking around naked. Yeah. That's how drunk he That's was. That's how drunk he was. And wow. he was looking for his son that he had put, put down in the grass. And he was like walking around cussing, trying to find his phone with no regard to the fact that one of his friends has gone overboard and she is somewhere fighting for her life and we can't find her. Right. And he has a friend that's got a broken jaw. He's obviously messed so up. He had another up. girl who had a really badly messed up, mangled hand. There was blood yes. everywhere. I mean, this kid had no, no regard for anything. Except for himself. Exactly. Yeah, and and one of the so one of the kids um, was in the back of the cop car because he got put in the cop car because it was his girlfriend that was overboard. So they I don't know why they felt like he needed to be in the cop car and not the driver of the boat, but they did. And he even said to the officer that was talking to him, "Do you see that kid right there?" And he the driver of the boat, and he said, "Yeah." He said, "Do you know who he is?" And he said, "No, I'm not sure that I know him." And he said. That's Paul Murdaugh. His dad is Alec. Good luck. Yeah. So he, um, that kid already knew that that his friend Paul was untouchable. Yep. Yeah. So things really start heating up around here. And about the end of May, um, toward the early part of June, they've got a trial date. They, it's like, it's coming. And we're all really kind of anxious to find out, you know, what, what they're going to find when they open up these books. Everybody's saying they're going to be hiding assets, all this other. There's just all kinds of rumors going around. So we were very interested in seeing what was going to happen. And I think we all really wanted there to be justice for this poor family who had been put through the ringer and lost their daughter. And that's when this story starts. Yeah, this is where it starts. So um, as, as they're doing the stuff for this, um, 
the uh, the attorney is has asked Alex and Alex is in a big law firm, big, huge, prominently prominent law firm in this town, and he's he's one of the partners, and so one of the partners is representing him, and this attorney for the victim goes to that attorney, I and mean, it's a small town, so they all know each other, and he said, you know, I need to see Alex's financials, I need to see the financials on him, and the guy said, um, Alex is broke, he has no money, and this guy's like, okay, they've got three properties, they've got um, a kid in law school, they've got a hunting lodge, they, I mean, these, these people live a very high lifestyle, he was a he was a practicing attorney. and a practicing attorney that did personal injury and wrongful death suits. And was a partner in his firm. He was the highest earning partner in the law firm. So he was making plenty of money. And this guy was like, I don't believe you. So they go back and forth and back and forth. And so he ends up having to go to a judge to issue he what he puts in for is he wants a judge to issue an order of an order to compel. Yes. And what that means yes. is when you, when you say, I'm not going to do it, then the judge says you have to do it, then you have to do it. So he was trying to avoid that, but he that was the only reason he could do it. So as they're doing this, what's also happening in the background that we don't know about is the um, head accountant of this law firm has seen some discrepancies and some discrepancies. things. And so she's, they there's been some... Um, fees, attorney fees that have not gone where they were supposed to. There's um, some trusts for victims that were supposed to be set up and structured that weren't. So all this money that's been supposedly given to these victims, the victims don't have it. The attorneys don't have it. The practice doesn't have it. And they're like, where is this? So then they go to the structuring company that, that does the structures that, and they're company is called Forge. So Forge doesn't have it because they said, well, we gave it to Alec and Alec said he would take care of it. So as they're doing this, literally this forensic financial investigation, they are finding out that Alec Murdoch has been stealing money from his victims and the partners in that law firm, hand over fist. And I'm telling you, thousands, hundreds of thousands into the millions. So and wow. with his type of practice, it was, they would file lawsuits against big manufacturers, like people that manufactured tires. Um, one of the victims had been in a terrible car accident with his mother or her mother and um, I believe brother. And they found out that it was a bad tire on the car. So they went after the tire manufacturer and they settled for millions of but dollars. Her lost her mom and her brother in that accident. And she was a teenager. She was a teenager. So she, you know, she was looking to, to try to survive and they settled for millions and she didn't get, and it was put into a conservatorship because she was a minor and she didn't get a penny. She would, call, she would call Alex and say, I need to get books for school. And he would give her enough money to get books for school. Yeah. And she, so every little cost or expense she needed, even down to tampons, she had to call and ask for money from him because she didn't have any. Wow. Most accounts, you would just get like a yearly allowance kind of thing, like a big lump allowance. And then you would have that to live off of, but you would also be very comfortable. You don't normally have to go and ask for little things. Like I got to go to the grocery store this week. It's not yeah. normal, but she didn't know. She, she had no know. idea. Yeah, and there was um, another. There was another lawsuit where um, they had a housekeeper years before this who had fallen at their house, and she had suffered a head injury, and she had lived for three weeks in the hospital, and she died. And she had two young sons, one of which is um, a, a. Hold on, I'm going to tell you what it's. Vulnerable a vulnerable adult. adult that I was trying to say <laughs> involuntary. And I'm like, that's not the not word. Involuntary. No, that's <laughs> me. <laughs> so, um, so her, her boys, I mean, she, she did not, she worked for this family for years upon years. She helped raise those kids and supposedly she tripped on the dogs and had a head injury. Okay. And then she died. And so Alex went to the boys and said, Hey, I'm going to try to get you all some money. 
and he said, um, I'll, I, if you sue, if you sue my insurance company, I think I can get you about $100,000 each. And of course, to these young boys, that seems like a huge amount of money. They've just yes. lost their mom. They're pretty much orphaned. Well, and they're also very poor. The yes. families did not have money at no, all. No, a lot of times they lived in hotels yeah. because they, they couldn't, which I think is sad. This family there she's working for owns all these properties and she is right. like scraping money together every day and half the time has to live in a hotel because she can't pay her rent. Like it's yeah. just, it's the, it's just sad. So anyway, um, so this kid, the older boy, or he's the youngest son, but he's the one that's not the vulnerable son. He okay. now is texting with Alex, like every couple of months, every three or four, maybe six months, how, how's the lawsuit gone? And he's like, well, it's a really big, complicated case. And so it kind of drags on for a while. And then, you know, he just keeps hearing, but then he hears on the news about how this case had settled for millions of dollars. For what case? The Satterfield. He heard, um, that's how he found out the case had settled. Somebody told him it was in the news. That the that case was, about his mother? Yes. yes. But that was oh, after. Shit. Uh, right. It's, uh, it's, this is after the big event. But just to tell you what this man was doing. So these kids had not gotten one single penny. Not a penny. Slick Murdoch had done two settlements, one for 750000 or somewhere around there. And then wow. one was for $4 million. It was a lot of money. Four and a half million, I think, was the total amount wow. that it settled for. And never told the boys that they won, but they had a settlement. Nothing. No, nothing. Nothing. They had no money. And he had taken all of it. It's so crazy, too, because, like, he could have given them each $100,000 and kept all the rest of the money. Not that that's the right thing to do. No, right. But, like, and not been a total dick. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you could have exactly given right. the girl some money of the money you stole from her. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and don't the Native Americans call it Wetico when you can't have, like, that insatiable, uh, like... You have a, a an insatiable need to get more and more. And more. I don't know. I never heard of that, but that's very crazy. Like, so it's just so it's baffling. It is baffling. So, so as the beach case is is coming to fruition, and they they've got this order to compel that the judge is getting ready to actually rule on. All of a sudden, wait. So we backtrack just a little bit. Now we're we're at a point in June where nobody knows yet that he's stealing, but they're suspecting it. And now he's got to open his books up. And yeah, so the one of the accountants at the law firm actually confronted him on June seventh, twenty twenty one. Yeah, um, about a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar fee that that was supposed to have come into the into the practice that. He said that was still at the trust agency. And when they called the trust agency, the trust agent said, it's with Alex. I, he told me he would take care of everything. And in the meantime, one of his paralegals or legal assistants went into his office and found a check for $750,000 that he had deposited mobily already. Oh, shit. So this is Bruin. And this lady goes and talks to him about this situation. That very night, Maggie and Paul are both murdered on their property. Murdered. And Paul, Paul is the son who was driving the was in the boat yeah. accident. Okay. And Maggie is the wife. Maggie right. is his wife. And at the beginning of this trial that we're in right now, the description of oh. what they went through when they were murdered is horrific. Like it's gruesome. It's I will say that Paul's brain was no longer in his body. Oh my like, god. Not just there were there was brain matter, spattered brain, but the brain was down on the ground. Oh I my god. Said. Yeah. What did you shut him with? Literally, literally, I didn't even know that could happen, but yes, it can. It did. So. And then Maggie was shot. Um, in the back, she was running and she was oh. shot, shot and fell 
And then whoever shot her came up and shot her again and oh. they had to kill her. Wow. It, was, it was a terrible, terrible, terrible scene. It was terrible. But what this does is, A, it stops this Mallory Beach case cold because they're not going to haul this man into court two days after his wife and son have been murdered. And there's no longer a criminal case because the criminal is dead. Paul, he, it, the criminal case was against Paul and now he's dead. So there's no criminal right. case. Now the civil case takes a huge turn because now, I mean, you can't, it's just, I mean, everything comes to a screeching halt while they deal yeah. with the, the murder of these two people. So this tri that's what this trial is. It is Alec Murdoch is on trial for killing his wife and son on their property on June 7th, 2021. Well, and can I just say that um, when it first happened and they were like, oh, who could have killed him? Who could have killed him? I was like, it's clearly <laughs> the dad killing the son for causing all this shit. And, well, and create, see, it's cr to create a diversion. Yeah, but it yeah, also closes so, the books. Right. They don't it have closes to look into the his books. books. Exactly. But there also have been rumors, and they're just rumors, that that Maggie and Alec were separating and that Maggie was calling, that wanted a forensic accountant to come in and take property values of what they had but that is a rumor and it really has not come up in court very much I mean they really haven't talked about it but that that rumor was flying around and then the other thing is so people people here felt like that he had killed Maggie and that Paul stumbled upon it for whatever reason and right. got caught up in it now listening to the trial my opinion and it is purely my unprofessional unsolicited uneducated opinion i think he set it up to kill both of them from the very beginning i, I i'm think, with you sister i'm with you yeah unfortunately it's all circumstantial there's so much that the jury is not allowed to hear from there are just so many laws about what you can present in court it drives me crazy because i think that if you're going to be on a panel of people making a decision about whether or not somebody has taken somebody's life, they need the full picture of what we're yeah. talking about here. They so, need the full yeah. picture. So of course the defense did not want any of his, what they call financial indiscretions <laughs> revealed in this court. They didn't want it to be, to be able to be presented in court. So for three days, we listened to all the financial stuff with the jury not there so that the judge could rule whether or not it was admissible. And then he said it is admissible. So now we're hearing the jury, let's hear it again. But oh, you know, wow. we're live streaming this. So we get to see when he, when something happens in court and he sends the jury out, it's live streamed. They don't cut the stream. So we get to see all the things that are happening in court behind the scenes, which to yeah. me is absolutely fascinating because twice now the defense has asked for a mistrial. And the son um the other son that's living his name is buster and alex's brother john marvin are sitting in the behind the defense and in the beginning they were like really up close and then karen and i noticed they were moved to the back and we wondered why are they sitting so far back i thought they got there late and somebody took their seat it turned out that during the part of the financial without the jury when the attorney for Mallory Beach was on the stand, they were laughing and <laughs> shooting him the bird. So the judge reprimanded them and moved them back. Oh and my said, God. If you continue this behavior, you're out. I mean, talk about the nerve of people. Can you imagine? No. Didn't that older son, there was something with him and a murder possible yes. potential something, right? Yeah. Yes. So, so they have exhumed the housekeeper's body because we're not real sure if she really was if, if there was a trip and fall the the um i don't even there were no witnesses except for the yeah. Murdoch family so yeah. we're not sure you know what happened there and then um i mean we're finding out that the day after the morning after the murder, Alec 
got in touch with the, I want to call her, she's not just a housekeeper. I would say she's a house manager. That's what I would categorize her as a manager. Because she did everything and she actually oversaw the help that was that was helping there too. That, um, I mean, I'm just going to tell you that it drives me insane because Maggie referred to them as the Mexicans, oh, which God. absolutely... It just, if you're, every time I hear it, I'm just like, are you kidding? Like people actually, in this day and time, you're using that kind of terminology. Are you dumb? But whatever. So, I mean, she is dead. So I'm, I'm not supposed to say things, but um, the house the house manager said it doesn't bother her. It doesn't bother her, but it bothers me. It might, bothers the hell out of me every time it comes up. But, but so he got in touch with her and, you know, told her that Maggie and Paul were dead. And that asked her if she could go out to the property. He said, there are a lot of people that are going to be dropping by to bring food and stuff. Can you just go in and clean the house for me so that, um, you know, you know, you like, you know, the way Maggie liked it. So you can, you go in there and get everything cleaned up. So this woman goes in, I mean, she knows that they were shot and murdered, but she has no idea. I mean, it's a, she's never been involved with the murder. So he tells her how to go into the property through an entrance that's not where the bodies were. So all of the sled agents were down at the kennels, which is where the bodies were. So she goes up to the house in a different way and circumvents all of the police. They don't know she's up there. She's the first one to go into that house after these murders. It's dark. And she goes in and starts picking up laundry that's laying around, picking up towels that's laying around, cleans the shower, She's cleaning up because she's tidying up. Well, all of this evidence, Sled had not been in there to even go through the house. Oh, at shit. All. So she goes in there. And not only that, but here's the affluence of his family. By the time Sled gets around to coming onto the property to go and search this house, there are so many people in that house already. Attorneys family, friends of family, everybody standing around while the sled agents are searching the house. Holy shit. Yeah. And they, I mean, I don't know, this deputy dog woman, I don't even know what her problem is, but she literally, I think she just went in and just like looked in the closet, opened the closet and said, no boogeyman and closed it and said, yeah, we're clean. <laughs> Perfect state of their mind that, he, that he's the one that said it. It wasn't until the whole picture came out, right, yeah. of all the financial crimes and everything that he had been doing in the background, that the, the sled agent said, wait a minute. Maybe we need to look at the sky. Now, in the midst of all of this craziness, the beach trial is now on hold. Maggie and Paul have been murdered. The crimes are starting to come out. And then all of a sudden there's this breaking news report that somebody has shot Alex. Yeah. And he's being flown to a hospital in Savannah, Georgia. And we're all like, oh my God, what is happening? Like, what is happening? Yeah, so at this point I'm like, oh my gosh, somebody... It's a hit. Yeah, they're executing this whole family. Yeah, the whole family out. Like, where's Buster? Buster, if the Buster taking out his family, or is there somebody protecting him? I mean, we're like, what's happening? And this whole debacle on the side of the road, Alex says that he stopped <laughs> on the side of the road to change a tire. Now, he's very wealthy, and the tires that he has are those no puncture tires <laughs> where you can drive mm -hmm. and they don't go flat, but he didn't think about that. So he says that he got a flat tire on the way to Savannah and he's pulled over on the side of this rural road to um, change his tire and some truck came by and shot him. But then we find out he, he was actually wanting to commit suicide, supposedly, because he wanted Buster to get all the life insurance to be taken care of. But we also find out that Peggy, Peggy no, Paul, nor Maggie, had life insurance on them so why would buster why would alec have life insurance on himself if he like there's no life insurance okay they found out there's no life insurance, there isn't oh, life insurance. no oh my God. no so that whole i only i wanted buster to get all the money and be taken care of so but what he did was there's this man in their family named cousin eddie Cousin Eddie does not live the way they live. No. <laughs> I don't know what happened with cousin. I don't know where this cousin came from, but he's like, I think he's one, I think he might have lived in the smokehouse. Like, <laughs> Eddie, like if you see pictures of him, his hair is like oh, like his hair is exactly what your boss does not want people to look like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's crazy. So he had paid, he was supposedly had paid cousin Eddie $40,000 to come and shoot him so that it oh, would shit. look, because he didn't have the nerve to shoot himself. Yeah. Okay. So cousin Eddie never got paid. So he's a little bit pissed off right now. Oh, he's, shit. he's oh, in protective shit. custody. Wow. So we're waiting to see if cousin Eddie is going to hit. So what we find out is that Alec was not life flighted to Savannah. He actually chartered a private helicopter to come and take him to the hospital. Oh, oh uh, my it was God. Not life, it was not life threatening at all. He had a small graze on the back of his head. What? Like I'm telling you, cousin Eddie is a horrible shot. <laughs> I don't oh, know wow. what cousin Eddie was shooting at, but he did not hit the mark. That's probably why I didn't get paid. But cousin Eddie said he didn't, that they struggled with the gun and he wouldn't do it. And oh, tried to get the guns on it. That's true. And, and then the gun went off. Went off and it's kind of safe. Yeah. So. It would not stop for guns. Yeah. So when Alec goes to the trauma center with non life threatening um, injuries, he actually checked himself into rehab and claims to have had a years and years and years of opioid addiction. And now he's got to be in rehab. Well, let me tell you what happens when you're in rehab. Ain't nobody going to put you in court if you're in rehab. Mm -hmm. they, they let, so he was in rehab for 60 days. I think. He is signed the attorney who happens to be one of our state senators. Yep. Oh, shit. Dick Harpootlian, and we like to call him Dopey Dick. <laughs> Dick is, I mean, those eyes are like little buttonholes. I mean, they're just like, this. he's got his arms up like this, and he's got red in the face. Like, he's he's carving out, I think, at lunch, and then he cannot stay awake in the afternoon. No. Senator gets involved in a local law case. It yeah. doesn't make any sense, y'all. It does not make well, any sense. It does if your campaign was put out of the Murrah. I guess so. That's yeah. right. It is. So down here in South Kakalaki, we are waving our crazy flags for <laughs> all the world to see because this has been crazy. I'm telling you, I'm a poor general hospital. I haven't watched it in like five days because I don't need the drama. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting all the drama from 9.30 until 5.30, Monday through Friday. I'm telling awesome. you, it's crazy. So today, um, the the attorney for Mallory Beach was on the stand in front of the jury. So the first time he was on, you know, we were listening to everything to see if the judge was going to allow it. So now he's actually there in front of the jury. And then um, they go to recess. And after recess, so every single day, there's like the family sits in the middle of the pew. It's John Marvin, who's who. And then next to him is his nephew, Buster, who's the surviving son. And then next to Buster is Alex's sister. I think her name is Lynn. Something. We don't know. We don't really know. And we don't really care. But <laughs> Unfortunately, they're not well behaved. Uh -oh. They smirk. They laugh at people. We lost you. Lost you. What? Uh, Can you uh, hear us now? I guess the internet came back. No? Oh. Oh, there, there it is. Go, there, there you go. go. We lost you at We Don't Really Care. Oh, it's, 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 it's us. It I might be me. It's one of those Chinese weather balloons. That yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They do like to sit home sound for a while. <laughs> so we anyway, lost you and you don't care who it is. So we don't care who she is, who she is. But I will tell you that they have a certain, they sit in the same spots every day, right? Well, today after recess, they kind of switched it up a little bit. And John Marvin was sitting on the end on the aisle. And we were like, why is John Marvin over there? Because we are looking like, guys, we are watching them like hawks. <laughs> So we find out that there's a kid that, kid, he's not a kid. He's a man, but to me, he looks like a kid. He comes on. He was really, really good friends with Paul, the victim. 
and but he is now a sled agent himself, or he's a cop in, in this little town, Walterboro. So he's a police officer. But he was originally, he worked at Alex's law firm as a runner. But then when the financial stuff started happening, he was recruited by the accountant to help try to find some financial dis indiscretions. And so he kind of had a front row seat to what Alec was doing at the law firm. Listen, to send this boy to the bank with a check for cash and having cash checks at the bank and bring it down. It's not money that you can get cash and check for you at the bank. Uh, That's what Maggie did with um, Blanca. I, they're, sending, they're so busy being rich, they can't even go get their own money out of the bank. They just send them with a check, and I guess the bank knows them well enough that they just are like, oh, okay, it's the Murdochs. We'll just send them your 100 Here's $100,000 in an envelope. Take it back to Alex. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. And that, I mean, that, I'm telling you, the lifestyle of this family is just, it really upset me today when the, when the house manager, I refuse to say she was a housekeeper. She was a house manager. And she said that when she, what would normally happen is um, a lot of times she would cook dinner before she, before she left and she would leave it on the stove. They would eat dinner and they would just leave the pots on the stove full of whatever they had not eaten. So what we would term as leftovers and it would just stay there overnight until she came back to deal with the dishes the next day. They didn't even put their leftovers in the fridge. They just threw it out. Like, yeah. what is that? Yeah. Well, they're moving on a level of money that just is not real. It's, you know, like just supposed to even eat your leftover. Like, you know, me, I'm like, I make a meal and I'm like, and tomorrow? You yes. know, and lunch for work tomorrow. <laughs> yes. And so when she, when she felt like the day that she went into the house right after the murders, the pots were not still on the stove. And it kind of freaked her out a little bit because it had oh, never shit. happened. And somebody had put lids on the pots and put them in the refrigerator, which never happens. Also, she said that the plates would normally be just left in the living room um, wherever they ate. They would just leave their plates, their dirty plates. And then she would come in the next day and get them. This, this day, the plates were all in the sink and rinsed. That's weird. So you can't even lift your plate from the living room to the kitchen. I will tell you that one time in my life, I worked for this, this guy who owned some media stations. Like he owned a radio station and some multimedia companies. It's right when the internet started. That's how old I am. I am truly a dinosaur. So old. <laughs> I used to do, I used to do like office management for him. And then I did like graphic design for his logos for these media companies that he had like 16,000 of them. And um, they were very wealthy. They lived on the side of a cliff in Maryland and behind like these gates. I had the code to get in the gate and everything. Their house was over a million dollars. They had a pool inside their house. Mm -hmm. a, a heated pool That's inside their house. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. Well, you really don't because they had water bugs like this big that were living uh -huh. in the house too because of the water. It was awful. But yeah. they had they had a staff that you know was there five days a week. And on Monday mornings, I hated going into work on Monday mornings because all of the dishes from all weekend long of half-eaten food, they were just everywhere. They never put their their plate they never took their plates to the kitchen so i can tell you that there are people that live like this it's ridiculous and it uh, no, let me tell you something okay uh, let me just tell you something uh -oh. okay uh -oh. are we gonna look at nydia no uh -oh. <laughs> yeah funny. nydia's never put a dish away in her life but uh, <laughs> for this podcast at least but if i had all of that kind of money i also would not put any dishes away <laughs> but i would pay them wonderfully like whoever was doing this for me like what do you want like what tell me your price and I'm never doing another dish I'm never picking it up where uh, truly I would be that asshole that I'd be like thank you so much I will be so polite about it I'm gonna leave this here and I'll see you tomorrow I'll see you in six <laughs> hours right. for meal number three like <laughs> you would never eat a steak dinner on a Friday night and leave that plate sitting in the living room until Monday morning no 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 they're gonna have to come back Saturday morning whatever <laughs> okay. like so this is a seven day a week situation I'm okay. never touching another dish never not one time coming bring it to me 
and take it away from me. <laughs> and, I, and I'm all for that. As pay long you as you so much money, days. like I'll pay you every bit of money that you want, whatever is like lifestyle you deem fit to bring me <laughs> my plate and to take it away. hundred percent. I'm on board for that. <laughs> Does that mean that you would refer to them as the Mexicans? Never. No. I, what do you want me to call you? Do you want a special name? Princess? Queen of Arabia? I don't care. Whatever you want yes, me to call exactly. you. Exactly. Mother Sunshine. Teresa. Like, yeah. What do you want to wear? You want a messy bun? I don't care. You don't have to. Like, just do whatever you want. If the food is good and I don't have to clean it, I'll pay any amount of money for that. Truly. And I really like your honesty. But I'm telling you, it really pisses me off that these people live like that. Yeah, because you know you. that they're treating them like dog shit. They're I not know. Paying. You're saying that they're not even able to make their rent, that they're living in motels and stuff. Like, this is not what I'm talking about. Like, I mean, I would be an asshole about it, but I would be so nice to you. I'd be like, whatever you need and want, like, I don't care, I'll, you know, yeah. and whatever, whatever it takes. But if I don't ever have to cook another meal or clean up after it, I'm here for it. And I agree with you. And I will tell you that this house manager, I think they probably paid her handsomely, but um, she knows so much about this family. She knows oh, yeah. She knows that Maggie did not wear underwear under her pajamas. I mean, well, and I don't either. That's a detail. I mean, you right got to air stuff out. You just, you, whatever. <laughs> but, you know, intimate details about this family. Like she knew exactly, she was describing on the stand today what drawers had what um, clothes of Alex in? Like, where were his weekend shorts? Where were his nice dressy shorts? Where, like, wow. she knows everything about them. So when she went in that morning, there were things that stuck out in her mind, like yeah. um, the khaki pants were balled up and on the floor, and they were damp. And there was a damp towel. And there was a damp towel. There was a shower taken at some point. Yes. It, had it, been after the it had to have been because we saw video of him on the property that day in khakis. And then when he met the sled agents, he had on shorts. And then she talked about the shirt that he left the house in. It's not a shirt that he had on in the video. And she's never seen that shirt again since. Never seen the shirt again. Right. It disappeared. Oh, right. the shoes he had on disappeared. Yeah, but she it's just amazing. But I feel so badly. So, um, Paul, no, come on, Karen. He did. No, Alex's mom has Alzheimer's, and there is a lady who, bless her heart, her name is Miss Shelley. She's been on the stand, and she she was she would come in and do the night shift with with Mrs. Murdoch. So she was there from, from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. And then she would leave and go and do her cafeteria job until two o'clock in the afternoon at a school and then go home and catch a couple hours of sleep. I mean, this woman's a saint. So she was there and Alec came in that evening while she was there on the 7th and told her, I've been here for 40 minutes but he had not been there but for 20 minutes. But mm -hmm. she had to testify on the stand. And you talk about a woman who was terrified. That woman, you could see her shaking. She was so, she cried. I think she's scared to death of this family. Scared to death. Of, and I would be too, because people tend to just die. But yeah. um, so it's crazy. So somebody, her daughter has set up a GoFundMe page because I mean, it, this was painful for this woman to testify and um, it was painful for us to watch, honestly. But she testified about a blue tarp and, and a raincoat and this, all this evidence and stuff. But the, the thing about it is, um, I, don't, I think that she didn't want to have to testify against this family, but she has to tell the truth. Mm. So, so her daughter has set up a GoFundMe page because, I mean, obviously the woman's probably out of that job. And you know, she's getting on in age. And I think her daughter just wanted a GoFundMe page to help her mom. So yeah. that one of the first donors of this GoFundMe page was Mallory Beach's family's attorney. He gave a thousand dollars. As soon as it came up, he gave a thousand dollars. So the, this morning, first thing before the jury comes in, the defense comes running in all breathless. They're just 
and they call for a mistrial. No, they call, they want this guy to not be able to testify on the stand because he donated to this lady's GoFundMe page. And it looks like, they said, it looks like he's paying her to be a witness. Oh, and the Jesus. judge, the judge wasn't having any of it. Good. This judge is so cool and calm and collected. I mean, this guy is not Judge Eno or whatever that guy's name was. He was yeah, this guy is like, he knows his stuff. And he just said, um, sounds like something to me you could cover in cross-examination when he's on the stand, but he's getting on the stand. Oh, so shit. They, But on cross-examination, they didn't even bring it up. Mm. Yeah, because it's not, it's a moot point. Like, who cares? It is, it is not even a point. Who cares? Yeah. The lady yeah. had already testified. Right, so. right. So we're having a good old time here in South Carolina watching this trial. We're all just hanging on the edge of our seats, hoping yeah, that yeah, Cousin yeah. Eddie makes an appearance. I know. Well, <laughs> we don't even know if this testimony is allowed because it talks about another issue. I think personally it shows that Alex was desperate yeah. for money. Yeah. And, but I don't know if the judge is going to let him come in and, and see. I mean, poor Cousin Eddie might not make it through the night. He's in protective custody. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. This, this, it is like you couldn't even write this. Like it's so as each thing like trickles out, it's like it's beyond. It is beyond. If you made a TV about this, people would say it's unbelievable. There are yeah. TV shows about it. No, but what I'm saying is that, that if this were a movie, like if somebody before this whole thing happened, if somebody put a movie out like this. Like you went too far, it's not believable. Right, right. <laughs> Out of curiosity, now yeah. you I know that in trial they pulled out the tapes or the videos of his voice. Yeah. That they claim it's his voice on scene. What do you guys think? It's his voice, and they play it every single day in court. Every witness that gets up there, <laughs> oh, they play it. The housekeeper, the friends of Paul's, everybody that's been on the stand at the end of their, right before they are done with their testimony, they play that video and say, how many voices do you hear on that video? Three. Who do you hear? Paul, Maggie, Alex. Oh, Puts shit. Puts them right there at the crime scene. Every single one of them. Not one person so far has said, oh, I can't really make it out or I'm not real sure. All of them has said it's Alex. And I know it's Alex because I've listened to that tape so many times <laughs> so what many. about a voice like do you think they'll do like a voice analysis or some sort of like forensic mm -hmm. testing i mean it? this is south carolina <laughs> we i mean they they had to get a special team in just to do the um cell phone stuff because we didn't have the right software to, oh, to okay. even to even break into the apple phone yeah wow. so they had to they had to get an fbi agent to do that for us we now have the software i understand in south carolina but um i dare say anybody knows how to use it it's funny because like the amount of money that the state has to prosecute him and the amount of money that he has to defend himself he is... has a lot more money than the state does yeah, I'm yeah. That. but it's now, not really his money it's right not his. yeah right right now who called him the bomb threat who called in the bomb threat i think it was buster it wasn't cousin eddie no, somebody on Alex's team, somebody. Oh, my gosh. So let's talk about the long threat. So, you know, this mm -hmm. is live streaming. So we see everything going on, right? So we see. I think that happened us. today, right? Yesterday. As of yesterday. Okay. Right? Yesterday. So that was yesterday, which really upset me because it really cut into our court time. It really did. <laughs> like, that really pissed me off. It was two hours. Oh, gosh. Yeah. On top was, of lunch. And he, and he kind of. And we were like, we can't leave yet because the court's still in session. <laughs> 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 oh, you can't leave the <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. So here's the thing. So the judge says, I'm gonna send the jury. All of a sudden it's like we need to send the jury to the jury room. Send them to the jury room. And then the judge comes on and says, um, Courts in recess. And then he walks away and then he comes back and says, We're just going to go ahead and take lunch now. Because he's usually like, he's right on time. You know, I know exactly what time of day this judge poops. For sure. Like, <laughs> I know when it's a poop break. I know. I mean, I know intimately. I am watching. 
So then he comes on and he says, um, he says, folks, we need to evacuate. We need to evacuate the courthouse. And so Alex, the camera pans over to the defense table. Yes. And the one of the attorneys whispers something in Alex's ear. And it's like, we have there's a bomb threat. And the smirk on this man's face is oh, so apparent. The smile that creeps across this man's lips was so diabolical. I was like, oh my God. And this is what the jury doesn't get to see. Mm. But he knew that he knew that bomb threat was coming. He knew it. And and what had been on the schedule, we're so off schedule now with this financial crap, but what had been originally on the docket was cousin Eddie was supposed to be in the courtroom that day. And I think well, they needed to buy some time. I they think they were to trying to buy, buy some, some time. time. They're to... trying to get to Eddie. Run, Eddie, run. Mm-hmm. Oh, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you think the, the ultimate outcome of the story is going to be? Like, if you had to take a guess, uh, you know, I mean, we all watched the Casey Anthony trial and the OJ Simpson trial. So we never know what the outcome is going to be. But what do you think? Personally, I think that he will not be found guilty of the, these murders. The good news is, is that he will be in jail for the rest of his life on the financial crime. So he will still be in jail. Yeah, I think just before the murders, he was already facing 400 years. Some, some outrageous like number of years. 400 years. You can't even be convicted for that for murder, but you steal people's money. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't that sad? I mean, oh. you know, I, we talked to these two murderers from our book, and one of them served less than 15 years for murder. But Jesus. this guy's going to go down 400 years for financial crimes. Yeah. Wow. wow. Do you guys have a death penalty? Yeah, yeah, we do. As a matter of fact, we brought back the firing squad. So you can Ooh, actually choose. Baby. I know. I mean, we oh don't mess God. around. Right. I like that part. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mess around. So now. Hard, oh. I know. It's, that's. I mean, that's kind of crazy, but kind of cool in a way. It's very psychotic. It's psychotic. It's totally insane. Yeah. Oh, it is insane. Not, we, were running low <laughs> on the, we were running low on the, the um, not, injection. I almost called it fuel injection. <laughs> We were running low on one of the drugs for the lethal injection. So they, instead of stopping the death penalty, which a lot of states have, we were like, no, we're going to go forward. We're just, we'll just shoot them. Fire we'll and squad. I'm not, I'm not pro or, or against, but if anybody deserves a firing squad, it's this fucking guy. Oh, like, for real. God, you're not kidding. He's, he's this is crazy. Mm-hmm. It is. I'm telling you, it's better than any John Grisham book I've ever read. <laughs> so that's our murder case guys it's unsolved and we usually don't do unsolved because we promised mama a long time ago that we would not do unsolved because she thinks all the murderers are going to come get us and we yeah. <laughs> wait if you talk about it like yeah because there is a girl um, that lives in that community. Her name is Mandy Matney. All hail the queen. And she does a podcast called The Murdoch Murders. Yes. And yes. she's the one that's going to tell you the right story. We've added in things that we recall and we remember, but we don't know if it's all 100% true. <laughs> so she, if you want the whole story and the truth behind what really is happening, Mandy Matney is who you want to be in touch with. The best but thing she's been on it since day one, right? Yes. She's yeah. So she was on it from day one. And if it weren't for her, this stuff would have never come to light. Mm-hmm. It would have never yeah. been on the world circuit the way that it is now. And she has done a and continues to do a phenomenal job with this. So that's why we don't we don't touch this on our podcast because I would never. I mean, I could never even be held in the same room with, like, I, I'm i not worthy. No, not. <laughs> I'm not worthy. She is absolutely, she's just been phenomenal. She has, she has befriended and done so much for the victims in this community, including um, the mother of Stephen Smith, who was a boy that died under very suspicious circumstances, which the outcome of that was heavily influenced by the Murdoch's. Right. So that's oh, another wow. murder. That's the one that they think Buster might have to in. Yeah, they think Buster was involved in that. 
yeah that's what i that's what i was talking about earlier that i knew that there was another like whole other yeah. situation that he like was weirdly related to and it was a that little suspicious and turns. yeah it's unbelievable they just keep digging up bodies left and right on these people i mean when this stuff started coming out it started off with the with the mallory beach case and then stuff started coming out left and right it's like every day there was something else on the news <laughs> what is happening yeah what but, is happening even One if you just if it was just the mallory beach thing and the accident on the boat if he would have just been like hey man i was drunk i made a mistake you know sue my insurance sue the home you know whatever sue all these people like he would have gone to jail for involuntary man yeah max like 10 fucking years so, yeah but they don't want to do it but, that, but that was, like it didn't have to you know you went so hard on trying yeah. to get out of everything that you could have just like owned up for the thing that you did and like you dad your dad wouldn't have had to kill you and but, his but mother like, you know like <laughs> that's true but the, right. but the other part of it is the financial crimes would have never come to light right because, that's what i'm saying like yeah Right, none of that, if, like his dad, when that shit started to, you know, come up, I'd be like, nah, bro, you're going to jail. Sorry, like, this was on you. Sorry, I'll come like, visit you. Know? In here, you know what I mean? But you just like, were so hung on to like getting yourself off and being above the law and like, that's the problem. Is that they're yeah. just so entitled that that's, they're so yeah. entitled and so privileged. And the corruption is just runs so deep. It really is quite disturbing. Yeah. I feel bad for anybody that lives in that town that oh, has lived I mean, under that. And it's like they have their own mob. It's, it's scary. Yeah, it really yeah. is scary. It is very scary. So, but I will tell you one of the wonderful things that Mandy Matten, just to, just to point out what a great person she is. So Stephen Smith, who was the boy that was killed by a hit and run, which was not a hit and run, but his mom had never been able to afford a headstone for him. And Mandy was able to go out and get funding, enough funding for her to get a headstone for her son, which I thought wow. was really, I mean, that's the kind of person Mandy is. She's not in it for fame or fortune. She's in it for truth and justice and the American fucking way. And we don't know Mandy. We've never met her. No, but if it's she just, wanted, no, she knew. no, we still like to give her credit because we feel like she's not, we could do the thing. We are not Mandy. We're not Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> we might get a shirt. Oh my God. We get a shirt that says, oh, we're, we're, not not, we're not Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do you hear music on upstairs or something? No. Oh, I'm losing my shit. All right. Yeah. Um, that was incredible. Uh, we I have we have some people in our in our Facebook group that like post about this sporadically and and you know everybody in the true crime community is sort of following this so like it was nice to have a a whole look at it from from, from somebody your, who's there yeah paying attention to it because that's really that's fantastic oh it's we're obsessed it is not paying attention we are immersed in <laughs> i see i see <laughs> i'm gonna go through withdrawals when this court when this case is over i'm telling you i don't know what i'm gonna do i have to go back to the general hospital i'm not watching general hospital what <laughs> no. After Jason well, Morgan left, what am I going to watch for? <laughs> unfortunately, there will be another crime that you'll get to. I know. You know, you know. Well, maybe we'll get some writing done on our book. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. There you go. That's all that's right now. <laughs> well, so definitely check out their book. Yeah. Where can we find uh, your book and um, give, give us some information where they can find you and get some of your stuff? Okay, so our book is on Amazon and it's on Barnes and Noble um, online. But if you are a Barnes and Noble patron, then you can walk into the Barnes and Noble. They can bring it up in their system and order it and get it into the store for you to pick up if that's the way you prefer to do it. Um, and the the book is called Click Click Click. It's hard for me to get that out with the bourbon, but. Um, <laughs> um, we make our own vanilla. It's called Kill a Vanilla. And you can email us because we have email. Our email is murder at sugar code. No, it's murder. Yeah, shoot, I get it messed up every time. It's murder dot sugar coded at gmail dot com. <laughs> <laughs> That's so and great. Comes, and oh god, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Our podcast is called Sugar Coded Murder, and 
we're on, I don't know, all the, pla- we're on, we're in all the places. I don't know. We're, we're yeah. wherever you listen to your podcast and we're there. Perfect. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And the book, definitely. Definitely the book. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, for sure. I'm excited for that. So that's it for us. And we'll see you next week. Uh, but in the meantime, subscribe so you don't miss out. Uh, we have merch. We have Patreon. We have Buy Me a Coffee. We have all the good stuff. You can write a review, share this podcast with somebody, or you can connect with us on all of the socials everywhere. Check you out next week. And remember, do not get taken to that second location. But hmm. I was just dancing along with you. (laughs) Yeah. Do not get taken to that second location. Be good or be good at hiding the body. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, guys. (laughs) So I want to tell them your your closing line. What's your closing line? Uh, We close with um, stay sweet and don't murder. (laughs) We will talk about you. Yes. (laughs) That's so cute. And now I we'll put that. you in our book, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even start with me. <laughs> I'll never stop telling anyone. <laughs> I'm going to stop recording. So that okay. way. I want to put this in mind. You're welcome.